welcome back to my channel sports fans okay let's get into this one the media continues to cover up lebron's career okay like i said in my past videos half of lebron's career is missing okay and i keep hearing this nonsense all the time LeBron James, uh, other than his 2011 finals, he's been great in the NBA finals. What? This is what your Rob Parkers will tell you, your Stephen A. Smiths, your Chris Broussards, you know, all these type of dudes that, you know, will kiss up the LeBron before they even say any criticism about him. He's a great father. He's been a great um, face for the game. He's never got into any legal trouble. He He's good with his wife. He takes care of his kids. All this nonsense. You know, and like I heard, I, heard uh, I don't even listen to these shows no more. I can't, okay? Since 2020, all those shows, pardon the interrupting, <laughs> pardon the inter interruption. It's early in the morning. I can't even talk. Uh, what is this? The show... Well, Undisputed, First Take, uh, The Odd Couple, I can't bang with them ever since the, the 2020 pandemic. I don't bang with them, bro, because these people came on telling people what to do with their lives. You know what I'm saying? And if you didn't do what they said, you was a bad person. So, you know, we was talk we were supposed to be talking about sports, but instead we had to be talking about what they wanted people to do. And we already know what it was about. It was about, you know, money that's what it was all about you can't trust nobody just because they said they did something a certain way if you didn't see it don't believe it that's all i'm trying to say i i, I don't trust none of these people because look look how they lie about lebron's career every day could you trust these people really can you really trust these people that lie about a guy's career and who was it i think dreamers pro was playing a clip shout outs to him uh on chris Broussard so-called criticizing LeBron yesterday about um, going back and forth with Nick Wright about pretty much his stats are empty, empty calories. They don't impact the game. <laughs> Chris Broussard said, I'm sorry, he used to be this great defensive player. I'm like, great defensive player? <laughs> he said, well, he's just now a good defensive player. I'm like, man, get out of here. This guy was never a great defensive player, never had a 100-block season, and Jordan almost had three. At one point, but we already know he had back to back 100 block seasons, 200 plus steal seasons, six in a row, 200 plus steal seasons. LeBron has never, never been a great defender, never. And he really, really hasn't had to in this weak era, in this no touch era. He can just put up these weak stats 27, 7, and 7 which is under, well, it's not nothing. Doesn't win you no know, statistical titles, two statistical titles in 21 years. Jordan, his his numbers won him 13. If I'm not mistaken, Will Chamberlain, his, uh, his stats won him, what was it? 18, I think 19 statistical titles. I think seven, seven um, what is this? Seven scoring titles, 11 rebound titles, an assist title. So you guys are trying to tell me <laughs> that LeBron James is better player than Will Chamberlain? How? <laughs> and they didn't even count the blocks. I'm talking about the guy would have averaged like a, a, a triple double for like most seasons. And he averaged like what? Two, three uh, steals a game or something like that. Two steals. A, it, it was nuts. LeBron ain't a better player than Wilt Chamberlain and Will Chamberlain would have had like five defensive players of the year. Same thing with Russell. You guys are, are just like they these guys just making up stuff, man. No way. And you can't compare errors. We're not doing that. Like I said, all we do is we look at what you did in your era, right? What you did. What's the statistical titles, the MVPs, the finals MVPs? Um in the championships that you put up in your era, your era, okay? And we say, well, who was the best of that era? Uh, like, okay, for example, LeBron. In his era, four championships, four MVPs, four finals MVPs, and two statistical titles. You think that really trumps what Wilt put up? Two MVPs, no, my fault, uh, two championships, four MVPs, 
a finals MVP in what was it like 19 statistical titles. Remember, we just can't use championships. That ain't what LeBron fans want. And they really don't want that. Really, they don't want that smoke because if we take out championships, what do we got? We're taking out championships and finals MVPs. OK, we'll lead the finals MVP, right? He got finals MVP, MVP. So that's four and four. And he's got his two statistical titles. That's not better than Will, Will, Will Chamberlain did as a basketball player on the floor. LeBron ain't winning one championship in the 60s. He's not beating that Boston Celtics team. You got to play the style that they were playing back then. What you guys try to do is you guys try to put, you know, don these players in this era and put this era guys back in the 60s. And you say, oh, LeBron would smoke the 60 guys. He would beat the 80s guys. No, he wouldn't. You'll be playing that style. <laughs> this ain't back to the future, dude. These guys are nuts. So that's the only way you can look at this whole thing. What did you do? Who was who was a great player in that era, right? Like Michael Jordan. Six championships, six finals MVPs, five MVPs. Uh, what is it? Uh, defensive player of the year and 13 statistical titles. And if we go to Kareem, if we go to Will, I've already did these videos. LeBron comes in number six. We put those things together. And we're not comparing errors. All we're putting up is the, the championships, the finals MVPs, the MVPs, and the statistical titles, and a defensive player of the year, if you got it. And some people get mad at, oh, man, you can't do that, man. Kobe ain't on there. I, I Like I said, I got a certain criteria. Is Kobe a better basketball player than LeBron? Yes. Did Kobe get cheated out of um, MVPs? Yes. They gave him to LeBron. They gave him to Steve Nash. But then again, I tell people, I said, look, Kobe had a chance to go to, what, what was it, Charlotte? He turned it down. I remember he said he was not going to go to Charlotte if they picked him. He wasn't going to go to the Hornets. So he could he, he probably could have went over there to the Hornets and even started. But he, he went to the bench and sat on the bench over there and, and, and for the Lakers. So let's get into this. They're trying to tell you over and over and over again that LeBron's 2011 finals was the worst finals he ever had. And let's keep in mind. Let's keep this in mind. Before we get into this, LeBron James for his entire career is a minus one, a minus 86. A minus 86 for his finals career. What? They're telling you that this guy is number two all time? Wow. I mean, let's go. 2007. They don't even count this. This is just, man, at least he got there. At least he got there? So because you got there, you got the right to melt down. You got the right to get swept. You got the right to have a bad game. Historically, bad series. What? Let's look at these numbers. We all know the guy scored 22 points per game. Mind you, this is this guy's fourth season. This is coming off a blowout against Plumbers in the international games in 2006 summer. This guy put up 36.6 field goal percentage. 
was it 36? I thought it was 35. I, maybe we're trying to be nice. 20 point. 20 or 20% from three point percentage. 69% from the line. 5.8 turnovers. How is that even possible? How could you? So at some point, <laughs> hold on now. So at some point you was averaging maybe like eight or nine turnovers in the game. Just to get down to 5.8. I mean, do in the 2008 playoffs against the Celtics, this guy had 10 turnovers in the first game in like 11 points. What? How's that even possible? And he was a minus seven or not m minus four. 2007 finals. They, they don't exist. Man, at least he got there, bro. Hmm. So because you got somewhere, it's OK for you to melt down. In 2006, that was his first playoff meltdown, right? Took a 3-2 lead going back home against the Pistons and he melted down. Go look at his stats. Or no, don't look at the stats. Go look at his percentages. My fault. Never look at this guy's stats because he's going to stat pad in, 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 until the clock hits zero. Even if it's a 20-point blowout, he's out there on the court stat padding. Who does that? Who does that? The game is over. And nobody says nothing about that in the media. The Chris Broussards, the Rob Parkers, the Stephen A. Smiths. You know, I expect Nick Wright and Kendrick, Kendrick Perkins and maybe Gilbert Arenas. I expect these guys to say nothing. But your Rob Parkers and Chris Broussards and Stephen A. Smith, they will always tell you, these shows aren't debate shows because they don't tell the facts about anything. They skip over history. They skip over the facts. They skip over numbers because they don't want you to go look at them. They're, they're basically calling LeBron fans idiots. You got to be idiots to wake up and listen to us. Why? Because we're talking to you like an idiot. So let's go to 2015 finals, right? I don't care what the stat line this guy put up. 35, 8, and 8. I, I, I don't care, bro. Miss me with it. 39.8 from the field. 31% from three. 68.7 from the line. 3.5 turnovers, a minus 25 for the series. What? What is it? What? And we all know why he shot like this. Because Iggy shut him down. Iggy shut him down. You got shut down by Iguodala? Any one of finals MVP on you? Could you imagine this happening to Michael Jordan? Getting shut down by Bruce Bowen in the 2007 finals, then getting shut down by Iggy. Both of them role players. And Iggy shut you down so bad that he won the finals MVP over Curry. Go look at Iggy's numbers. Iggy, Iggy, whatever his name is. Go look at his numbers and go look at Curry's numbers for that 15 finals. It's a laugher. Curry had a better game, but they gave it to Iguodala because he shut LeBron down on these percentages. While LeBron was stat padding at the end of those blowout games where he took a 3-2 lead going back home without Kyrie, who got hurt in the first game. And just because love gets hurt doesn't mean you got to melt down. 
This is a meltdown. It's impossible. Oh, we don't even put on here how many uh, uh, threes this guy attempted. It was crazy. Guy attempted like five, six threes a game. Bro, you ain't Curry. So you think 2011 was his worst finals? Huh? Let's get into it. 47.8 from the field in 2011. 32.1% from three, 60% from the line, four turnovers per game, and was a minus 36. Well, perhaps he shot a higher field goal percentage than these other two finals. Um, He shot a better three-point percentage than these other two finals. Did shoot a, a poor um, free throw percentage. Had less turnovers than the first finals. And let's see. Yeah, he was pretty bad on the plus minus. <laughs> I mean, he, he was pretty bad because this guy was disappearing in the fourth quarters. The, these other two finals, he didn't disappear. He just bricked it up in the fourth quarters. Or it was just, it, it, yeah, he was just bricking it up. 2015, it, it, it was a blowout. He was just in there stat padding. So how could anybody say that this guy did all he could in 2015 um, putting up these weak padded stats on 39% from how could you ever shoot anything like this as a forward who shoots like 60% or more of your shots in the paint? How is that possible? If a guard shot like this, you, you probably could understand it. He's shooting all his shots from the perimeter. But a forward? Who plays like a center? What? What about the 2008, what, 17? What was it, 18 finals? What was that? When he quit on his team? Yeah, I think it was 17 finals. 18. This guy literally quit on his team in the fourth quarter. We all remember that. Stephen A. Smith gave him the business. That's why I say when they put this guy number two of all times, somebody's mentally sick. The media is mentally sick. That's why I don't watch the news, the regular news, because it's sick. All they do is talk about bad stuff. And the sports media is like that, too. They're mentally sick. All they do is lie. I mean, I, I got a full graphic of this. This guy was a minus in every NBA Finals. Two and four in your first six finals? <laughs> this guy was two and four in his first six finals. And we're, we're, they were still talking about how close can this guy get to Michael Jordan? Can he catch Michael Jordan? I'm talking about they are talking to these fans at the time. In 2016, if he wins this final at two and four, he'll be closer to Michael Jordan. I mean, this this is sickening. In the 2015 finals, that was the first finals. He finally broke 30 points per game in a final series, right? It took him that long. And look what it took him to shoot 39%. How many shots was you taking, dude? From what I remember, the guy got to the line a lot just to get those average. What was that? 35 points or something like that. And look what he shot at the line. So imagine how many points he left on the floor. He attempted like six threes a game or something like that, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> this guy... Just because you don't have no help, that don't mean you don't you, you can't be efficient. Man, he was doing everything, bro. <laughs> well, let somebody else do something. And he wasn't doing everything. He was just stat padding at the end of these blowout losses. Wasn't it? <laughs> that's what I'm trying to tell you guys. You know, his fans, they arrived in 2011 when he built his super team. 2016 when he beat the Warriors. In in 2020 when he won the bubble championship. They don't know his history. 
And the media isn't going to tell this guy's history. He's not a top 10 player. Meltdown after meltdown after meltdown after meltdown after meltdown. 